Well, I pulled a pretty, pretty rookie maneuver today. One, <clears throat> the main thing is I forgot to get the chorizo for this. So I've got bacon, I mean bacon, I've got potato and egg burritos. They're pretty good, but chorizo would have been really nice. I'm out in a different area today, a really nice valley. And it's a valley that is got all these pine trees in the middle of a desert. I'm surrounded by desert here. And some yahoos were over here shooting earlier. I, I don't know why people shoot. This is a, where a lot of people come and camp around here because it's, it's nice areas. Not a lot of flat areas because it's, like I said, it's in a pretty steep valley. When I got this morning, it was a little breezy out. I thought to I thought it'd be a good test to uh, for my new awning. The theory behind this awning and the the thing that I why I really wanted it. No poles. I mean, it has poles. It I think it does. Oh no, it has guy lines if you if you need to peg it down. But supposedly the way it's built because it's this truss design that it stands up to, you know, some good breeze. Uh, if it starts to get really windy, it'll probably do more damage to the roof rack or the car than it would the awning because it acts as a big sail. But it's, I've had some gusts here and it's, I'm perfectly content with it sitting there. I may have showed you how I deployed it. It like deploys in 10 seconds. <laughs> Look, I, I really like awnings, especially when I'm doing my desert adventures. Impossible to find shade. But if it's a real nightmare to set up, like, I am I guess I'm lazy. I just don't want to set it up if I'm going to be there for, you know, maybe I'm just going to cook something up real quick. Or I'm not staying the, staying the night at that particular spot. I want something I can depo deploy quickly, put away quickly. And that's after... Probably two years of research, I, I came across this one. The other one I have on my Jeep, it's nice, but man, it's got one, two, it's got three poles that come down. It's a 270 as well, but it's a real pain in the butt. And if the wind picks up at all, you got to get your guy lines down because that thing is like, whoo, it wants to go. It's, li it's lighter weight, but it's a real pain in the butt. And if it's hard to set up, you're never going to set it up. Yesterday, I got up and I went for a for a little adventure in the 80, just in the morning. It was, uh, I went up into the forest area, kind of cruised around for about, I don't know, two hours or so. But in the back of my head, I'm like, man, you know, I got these projects that I want to do and I get pretty excited about doing those projects, finishing them and then putting it to use. Like today with this awning, you know, I, I've had this awning for about eight months sitting in the corner of my garage and to have it on now and to be able to come out today on a breezy day with a little bit of gusts to test it out, it's awesome. And you could see it lays a pretty good footprint of shade down. You gotta be you gotta be mindful of where the sun is, because if you park wrong, you could put out the biggest awning you want and it won't <laughs> cast the shade. So you gotta think ahead a little bit. But it does pretty good in how quick it deploys. I was saying before that now I'm going to use it. I'll use it a lot. Where the other one, I don't use it much at all. And I paid a lot of money for it, you know, five years ago. And it's, at the time, it was probably the best thing that was out there. You know, one, you know, a highly rated awning. But I don't know, I love this one. And if I didn't mention it before, this is actually from Australia, but I... I'm going to go out on a limb and say it's designed in Australia and it's built in South Africa. So I've said it before that you talk about some of the really most popular overlanding countries, Australia, South Africa, and then the United States. So it's got, it's got some lineage to it, but it works really good. It works really, really good. And I like it. So when I was out off road and I was talking about, I had all these projects on the on the back burner. You know, I've got my, my Land Cruiser 60 at the house now and I, I've ordered some basic parts for that, so maintenance parts, different things, trying to get the thing running to where I can drive it. But on this one, I did the last video I talked about how I did the passenger seat. I, I basically reupholstered it, new foam, 
all that stuff. And I had everything I needed for the driver's seat. Well, when I was off-roading yesterday, I'm like, ah, oh, you know, I can kind of feel the thing poking into my hip because <laughs> it was pretty worn out and it was torn. So I came back from that adventure it was about 11 o'clock when I got home, 11, you know, in the afternoon. So I pulled in, I immediately pulled the seat out, you know, 12 millimeter, boom, seats out, four bolts, unplugged the power uh, seat controls, carried it into my other garage, and I just went into like, I don't know what mode I went into, I went into focus mode, I guess, and I went straight through, I took it all apart, I actually did it in a different order this time. I did the back first, and then once I had that all done and the headrest, I set that whole piece aside, and then I had the seat pan. Then I tore the seat off, and again, I didn't ruin anything. Just, I don't know, it's factory stuff. So I cut all the hog rings, took it off, got that on there, you know, fought with it, put it back on, put it back in the car, done, 4 o'clock. So from about probably 11.30 to 4 p.m., I got it 100% completely done in one standing because I was standing the whole time. But I just was focused on it, and it helped out a lot that I had already done one. Now I knew what bolts to take out and what not to take out, kind of how to fold and, and attach and do all that stuff. So now I've got both the drivers and the passenger. The seats are done, good to go. I got to finish wiring up. I've got um, USBs and different things on the console. I need to wire those up. I've already put in a secondary little fuse panel for it. It's underneath the, the passenger footwell on the right hand side. There was some existing factory studs that are welded and just sitting there so I was able to mount it right there. I can get to the fuses easily and it's out of the way where it won't get kicked. And it'll allow me to bring in power straight from the battery and then distribute that power out to these USBs. And I think four of them are switched power and three of them can be constant hot. So you have your choice whether you want to put a USB on a on the switch power, which is when you turn the key on, or if you want it constant hot. You know, there might be one you want constant hot where you're charging your phone up or you're charging something up while you stop. You know, you don't want it to shut off every time you shut off the car. So the, the option's there for that. It's really good. But coming out here, the road's kind of rutted a little bit, and it, it really pointed out something else. I've got this, this chair here. These chairs are really cheap, and they, just, they fold up, but they're metal, right? Or they're aluminum, and you, they're loud. So I've got, that's why I like the ones that kind of close up you can put into a little bag. But I've got that big plastic table, I got this chair, I've got my front runner Wolfpack Pro box in there. And they were banging into each other and my tripod banging, clanging. Oh, I, I hate that kind of noise. I mean, I hate little squeaks, but when it was, you can hear it sliding across the table. So I got to figure out what I want to do with the back of this. Honestly, I, I don't want to do anything because this is what I take my dog in all the time and he loves to have that big back area. And I'd like the ability just to, to pull the seats out and lay my, my little twin bed in there and I can sleep inside it then. These front runner boxes, I got some of the new pro versions which are really nice. Like the, the, the way you attach it, just everything about it is so much better than the originals. And the originals that I had what I did was I put them in the garage and I labeled them 60, 80, you know, Lexus. And all any spare parts or stuff that I've taken off that I want to keep, I put in these boxes and they're all labeled and they're stack up on top of a shelf completely out of the way. So that works out really good too. I really was looking forward to this weekend after a couple of weeks of not, well, not too long ago I had a pretty decent one, but getting out here sometimes not continuing to drive to get out somewhere to stop make some food hang out and that's what I that's what I was really looking forward to this weekend but it's a bonus man I got that seat done I, I was actually pretty proud of myself I was able to do it all in one sitting in about five hours or so because like I said the last one I did two hours here two hours there two basically over 
three or four days I did it. And it, it, you know, mentally it makes it sound more difficult than it actually is. So glad I got that done, super comfortable. The bolstering on the sides isn't as much cause it's real puffy, but it's like, it's, it's firm, but it's like sitting on a couch. It's very comfortable and it's nice to have not all the rips in it, you know. But I'm going to hang out here for a little while longer. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I, I Like I said, I forgot my chorizo, but there was pretty good. Pota uh, potato and egg, it was good. little burrito time. It's still, it's still the morning. That's why I had breakfast. But even if it wasn't morning, I love breakfast all day. You guys, thanks for hanging out with me. I'll see you guys in the next video.